I agree. And so, so Spain is a, a, a country that we have liked, uh, Italy as well, and Portugal. So the peripheral countries is an area that we do like. Political uncertainty is the new normal. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's something that we have to contend with as investors, both in fixed income and equity space. Uh, so there's no real surprises there. Uh, it always bears watching, but I don't think it's uh, a game changer in terms of the path in which uh, Spain is going down. And they have turned the quarter, corner uh, the past couple years, uh, fiscal uh, uh, austerity in a way, but spending in the proper ways. And, uh, and so we're actually quite constructive. One of the analyst notes that was sent to our newsroom in the last couple of days had a really interesting chart looking at the spreads between Italian and Spanish bond yields. And I wondered, from your perspective, is Italy a bit more of a concern in terms of both the volatility on its yield as well as the long-term political outlook? Absolutely, but you're getting paid for it as well. And so, and so that spread is actually pretty, uh, pretty attractive. And so if you look at it versus Bunds as an example, uh, it's been kind of in a range the past you know, six months, you know, just call it 300 to kind of 250, and you're kind of in the mid part, of the, well, slightly towards the tighter end of that range, but we still think there's capacity for that to continue to tighten. So I think uh, Italy is always a, a, a source of volatility, particularly politically, economically, it's the same story, uh, kind of not you know, growth uh, gangbusters by any stretch, uh, uh, but I think it's a stable story and you're getting paid for it. Now we saw Italian banks react really well to the S&P's rating affirmation of Italy on Friday. And what does this say about sentiment, the fact that we did see such big moves on the back of this? Were investors really positioned for a change in outlook or possibly even a downgrade to Italy? I mean, doesn't that su suggest that there's a big element of fragility still in, in sentiment? Yeah, and too, too much negativity, I would say. Uh, and, uh, and that really manifests itself uh, in the banking space. as. Uh, uh, investors kind of look at, uh, in Italy, banks uh, and the sovereign as one, uh, uh, and you see a lot of the sensitivity around that uh, in the bank space, even more so than the sovereign space. So to me, it suggests that investors have just been a little too negative around the prospects for Italy. And how much of that is predicated on the ECB stepping in with their TLTRO? I mean, Italian banks clearly going to be a beneficiary of this, but we're still waiting those, for those details to come in June. So how much of this sort of optimism that you're suggesting we should have on Italy is predicated on the ECB's moves? I would. I think that's a big part of it. Uh, but but I, I don't believe that uh, you're, you're not going to get what was promised by the ECB either. So I, I think it'd be a shock, surprise if the ECB kind of tweaked the program in a way that was quite, you know, disadvantageous to Italian banks. Uh, so to me, uh, uh, it is uh, a, a known known at this point. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.